the best moment of the 2022-23 season. It could be the Evgeny Malkin shootout winner against Calgary. It could be, uh, I would say, a host of other things because there were plenty of great moments this mm-hmm. season. Maybe not great wins, but certainly great moments this season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. What's one that you look at? Well, there's the obvious thousand-game celebrations for both Malkin and Latang. Sidney Crosby's 1,500-point, although that had happened on the road. Um you know what? I have to go off the beaten path here and just uh, just because I love picking on this man. It's You got to go with the Jason Zucker and oh, the goalie's name's not Jordan Bennington feud uh, whenever St. Louis <laughs> came to Pittsburgh. There, there was just something extremely fun about that game. First of all, it's early in the season. You didn't know where the Penguins were going to take things yet. There was still a very high chance that um, Penguins were going to make the postseason. So the vibes were very good all, all around the team. And we knew we were going to get Bennington antics just because we always, everyone always does. Mm-hmm. And of all people to have it happen against, it was Jason Zucker. And it was great theater, honestly. I think every little bit of that, those couple of minutes from the start of the second period to all the way up until Thomas Grice fell trying to come in, come in relief. And that one's going to stick out quite a lot. And it's not the obvious choices of, like I said, the 1,000 game celebrations or mm-hmm. um, any other milestone nights. Yeah, when I saw this question on the rundown, there's only one moment that really stuck out in my head as the best moment of the 2022-23 season. Like you mentioned, plenty of great moments. Malkin, M1K in, uh, Chris Letang, which was K, was it KR1KS, whatever it was. Uh, oh, one, it was one Chris. That's what it was. One Chris, uh, Crosby's 1500th point, which I feel like was anticlimactic because it was a three point game in Detroit at the end of the season when there was so much more on the line than Crosby hitting 1500 points. Right. Uh, but my pick has to be Chris Letang's second return from injury in January. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know what Chris Letang has dealt with over this season second stroke, the loss of his father dealt with a lower body injury in the midst of all of that. But when he returned from that lower body injury and that bereavement leave, two goals and two assists, including a game-winning overtime goal against the Florida Panthers, against Alex Lyon when he was still a sieve, right? (laughs) We saw all four goaltenders in that game. I thought we were going to see an e-bug. I thought there was a chance we saw five goaltenders play in that game. I believe it finished seven to six. But Chris Letang was the star of the show, scoring that overtime game winner in one of the best moments, not just of the Pittsburgh Penguins season, but one of the best moments of the entire year across the NHL. And as I've said several times, you've echoed the same sentiment. He deserves the Masterton Trophy because he has showed from the beginning of the year the entire way through that his commitment to the game, his commitment to his teammates is outstanding and next level. So I believe he, he deserves the Masterton. I'm going to continue to campaign for that mm-hmm. until it's announced. He is a finalist, uh, meaning he's one of the 32 finalists because he was named the Penguins Masterton Award nominee. But that moment, his return as a defenseman, you know, no less. So not only go back and score a big goal in his return game, but score four points, including the game winner for your team. Against a team that, let's not forget, right down to the wire, it ended up being Penguins-Panthers. So that win was important and could have played a major role if the Penguins were able to get two more points in the standings. Yeah, it was a huge game. I have kind of forgot about it, honestly. Uh, that was another incredible game as I'm looking at the you know, the scoring summary. it's It was a back-and-forth affair. Uh, Panthers went up 2 nothing early. Mm-hmm. Um, Penguins roared back with three, but you know Carter Verhege wouldn't be denied. He scored a uh, to make it three to three before the first period is even over. It was yeah. one of those kind of games where, oh boy, what's happening today? We just the over under was six and a half, so it technically cashed in the first period, which was ridiculous. Yeah, and then you go on a couple of goals, um, you know, one one aside in the second, and then everyone scored again in the third, and then that just w- is what led to. Um, <laughs> don't don't take a penalty against the Penguins in the in the in overtime. That was one guarantee we had this season. That was one bonus. Pretty much one any of the, time. A few, but yeah. not many. Not many. But there was one positive guarantee. Don't take a penalty against the Penguins in overtime because 
you give him a four a space of four on three, and it's it was the same combination every time. Crystal Tanks from the point. And it was something about that that game specifically. It was special and it was um awesome to see. And that should be, you're right, one of the one of the reasons that pushes him in the direction of a Masterton trophy this year. It's really unfortunate the Penguins missed the playoffs this year because it really was the year of the big three. Two of them hit 1,000 games. Crosby hits 1,500. Latang, I, I obviously know I'm not going to say it was the year of, of Chris Latang, but considering what he went through, the performance he was able to put out, especially in the latter half of the season, a lot of people aren't understanding how good he was towards the back half of the season and how yeah. good he was after coming back from that bereavement leave, from that lower body injury. And that was while playing with, yes, he he got to play with Marcus Pedersen for a while there. Then he had to play with Brian Dumlin again. And while it wasn't fantastic because Brian Dumlin, let's face it, shouldn't be facing top line minutes anymore. I thought Chris Letang was really good in the second half of the season because also stuff that people are pointing out is that he struggled at the beginning of the year, but to be able to not just go through all that comeback, but be better after that, uh, you just have to tip your cap to Chris Letang. Yeah, you have to. And, you know, you're right of the year of the, the year of the core, just because it's, it was the first year after the full commitment. It was, yeah. this is the best that they could possibly be. We don't know what the future holds because when, when we saw Malkin and the tank sign those deals, we went, okay, First year of that's going to be awesome. Second year of that could still be awesome, but you never know. Third, fourth year, uh, now it gets a little shaky. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. They have one more real year to look just as good as they did because we don't know when Father Time catches up to all three of them. We don't know what future team – You know, we don't know what the team of the future looks like. Let's be real. New management's coming in. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm not doomsdaying this. I'm just saying. Um <laughs> It was their year. Malkin and Crosby played all 82 games. First time ever. Part of the only time ever. Let's just be honest. And we missed the playoffs. We missed the postseason. Those two had fantastic seasons. Mm -hmm. Not the world-eating seasons that they had in their prime, but good enough years that they should have had more help. And, you know, you're, the discussion of how we would have played against Boston or even Carolina, for that matter, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We would have had postseason hockey to watch. We would have had the team would have had that postseason revenue, money, money. It's we can't, you know, say missing the postseason was a good thing. But you know what? <laughs> We're here now, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And that Crystal Tang moment was an all timer, regardless of whether or not it came in a season where the Pittsburgh Penguins made the playoffs or not. 